G'day guys, Greg here from Custom Guns in Vicargo. Um, I've got a little video I want to do today, a bit of myth busting looking at suppressors. Now, um, there's a few key things that people want to know about when it comes to fitting a suppressor to your firearm and I thought I'd cover those today. So for a start I'll just give you a rundown on what we've got going on with the equipment now. I've got a Tika T3. This is the T3 light stainless, so lightweight barrel, stainless steel, synthetic stock, nice, nice and light, nice um, carry rifle for up in the hills, very popular in New Zealand simply because they're accurate and they're nice and light and they're a good durable firearm. <clears throat> now I've got a three and a half, sorry a four and a half to 14 Leupold VX3 on top, it's a nice all rounder, four and a half, not bad for close work, bush, uh, heavy cover and 14 gives me some legs, so out on the tops and longer shots, and it's chambered in 308. Now, today the ammo I'm using, Federal Fusion ammo, it is the um, stuff in the sort of goldy, uh, orangey, yellow box. They're a bonded projectile, it's a 150 grain projectile in weight, and bookload has it doing at the muzzle 2,820 feet per second, 2820. So um, now the gun I got today, very commonly known as a bush pig in New Zealand, it's been shortened up with a suppressor fitted, um, so they're nice and light and short, so easy to get, easy to bash through dense cover. So you see it's been shortened. I've shortened this to 18 inches. Um, this is a DPT suppressor. DPT make fantastic lightweight suppressors. This is the Magnum model. Uh, beautiful, lightweight, yet very good sound suppression. You'll see it's been shortened to 18 inches, so about four inches off what they are normally um, with the suppressor fitted. Now, when you shorten a centerfire firearm, you're going to have a reduction in velocity. That just goes without saying. So, how much reduction you get does depend on the cartridge. Your big magnums tend to lose velocity much more quickly as you shorten it than a short fat cartridge. So the 308 is not a bad cartridge to shorten because they're pretty efficient with their burn. It's not particularly long and it doesn't have a very big taper to uh, through the shoulder to the neck of the projectile. So if you can imagine your big 7mm rem mag or a 300 win mag, which I've got here, you see the projectile is the same size and weight, the case is much bigger and the taper is greater. So it's like that bottleneck uh, trying to funnel all that energy through that bottleneck and out the end. Now a 300 win mag of course flicks the projectile out a hell of a lot quicker than a 308, but the trade-off is you need a longer barrel to be efficient with the amount of powder it needs to burn through. So if you shorten a 300 wind mag up to 18 inches, it's not much faster than the 308 is. A little bit, but not much. So the 308 is actually pretty efficient for this sort of use, and that's why they're pretty popular as a bush pig. Um, short, light, bush firearm. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a couple of key factors involved in the suppressor a lot of people have queries about. Now, the first one is velocity. Well, I've got a chronograph downrange. I've, I'm a sole operator here. I'm operating the camera by myself. So I'll read out to you the uh, chronograph readings when I fire. So I'll give you those numbers. Um, and I'm shooting downrange at a target at 100 meters. So I'll um, put some shots through it. We'll have a little look and see how uh, we go for velocity, considering it's four inches shorter than normal, and normally they think they, their uh, recommendation is that it should be doing 2,820. Now, with four inches taken off, the usual thing was most people sort of think you lose about 50 or 100 feet per second per inch. So if you took four inches off and it was 100 feet per second, that's 400 feet per second off, it's only doing 2,400 feet per second. Well, if that's the case, even then, if you think about a 3030, which is the same size projectile in your flat points out of your lever actions, now that's doing about 2400 feet per second and they tip deer over no problems. So as far as I can see, if you did shorten it to um, be so short as to perform at the same speed as a 3030, you've still got a pretty useful firearm. But 
As I say, because of their efficient design of the case, I think that you'll lose much less than that. In fact, I think it's somewhere more around 25 feet per second per inch. So that means I've lost about 100 feet per second. So I should be, roughly, about 27.20. We'll see how we go. Um, I don't know how long a barrel that is, actually. That might be on a 24-inch barrel, and so that in that case, that might be, say, 26, 70, 80, somewhere around there. Uh, that being said, we're only going to know by firing it, so we're going to have to put a few shots through it. I'll read out them scores for you. Now, some people ask, what's the effect on the velocity of the projectile when you have the suppressor on and off? So I'll do that too. I'll just take the suppressor off and run a couple of shots through, and so that way we can compare. Now, generally, people think that it'll slow the projectile down. In actual fact, it shouldn't. Um, because you've got a little bit of back pressure as the bullet is traveling through the suppressor, it's kind of like lengthening the barrel a little bit. So um, it should, with the suppressor on, be a little bit quicker than with it off. Now, when the bullet passes through the suppressor, it doesn't actually contact the suppressor at all. It doesn't touch it. The suppressor is affecting the gas that's escaping behind the bullet. So a suppressor is capturing that gas, a bit like the muffler in a car, and it's slowing the gas down to the, to the point where it takes the boom away. Now, I like to describe a suppressor as uh, working to capture the boom. And to explain that a little further, a firearm, when it when you fire a centerfire firearm that shoots a projectile beyond the speed of sound, there's two things, two key things that affect the noise, that create the noise. First one is the projectile in flight, and the second one is the gas escaping. Now, if you compare the noise of the two, and anyone that's been downrange, maybe if you've shot at an F-class competition, or if you've been in a situation where you've had somebody firing a projectile toward you, the projectile travels faster than the speed of sound. So as the bullet passes you, you'll hear the crack of the bullet in flight, and that's the bullet breaking the speed of sound. The second noise you'll hear is the boom of the gas escaping as the bullet exits the barrel and the gas behind it comes out. So if I describe the sound of a gunshot as being kaboom and the cut being the crack of the bullet in flight and the boom being the gas escaping, well, what a suppressor does is it captures the boom. Hopefully that sort of makes sense. So it won't make it silent, but it takes away the boom. Now, depending on the cartridge, they have some have more boom than others. Now, the 300 Win Mag has a lot of boom. The 308 has got a fair bit too. If you go down to your slower projectiles, uh, slower ammunition, like for example the 22 Hornet, uh, they have a bit less boom, but they still have a bullet that breaks the sound barrier. So you'll find that a suppressor works shall we say, more efficiently with a bigger cartridge that has more boom because it's got more gas to capture. It can't affect the sound of the bullet in flight. So what you tend to hear is the crack of the bullet and you don't get the boom anymore. And it's quite a distinctive difference in the sound. Um, the more efficient the suppressor, of course, the better it's going to be. But modern suppressors that they've got designed nowadays, and look, in New Zealand, they've had suppressors have been very commonplace for many, many years. So the manufacturers that are building suppressors in New Zealand are world class. They're very, very good value for money. This is a, a um, DPT Magnum, and it's 405 bucks now. Sub 500 dollars, it can you can put it on a firearm up to a 300 Win Mag, and it will really reduce the sound to a fantastic uh, level uh, lower in, in noise. Um, they really do a fantastic job and they're excellent value for money. Um, so the manufacturers that are producing um, suppressors in New Zealand, really they're world class and they are actually exported all over the place. So you probably see them in places like the UK and that sort of thing. I don't think they can get them into the US because they're a bit funny with those sorts of things over there. But um, certainly there's some really, really good technology in the suppressors that we have here in New Zealand. Um, so we've had a look at the velocity and we're gonna have a little look at that in a minute. 
and we're going to have a look at the point of impact change. Now, with point of impact change, when the firearm recoils, without a suppressor on it, you tend to find it lifts more. And in actual fact, it feels like it recoils more than with the suppressor on. Now, when you have the suppressor on, the suppressor slows down the gas escaping and so therefore slows down the recoil. So it pushes back against your shoulder more slowly and so it feels like there's a lot less recoil. And I would describe it as being about probably half the recoil that it is without it. So what I'm going to do is I'll shoot this and I'm not going to support it from the front. I'm just going to have it leaning on the bag and I'll um, pull the trigger and we'll see how much muzzle lift we get against my shoulder with it on and off do a couple of shots. I'm going to put some shots down range onto the targets and we'll just have a little comparison and we'll see what it's like in terms of recoil with it on and off. The three things we want to have a look, a little look at, we've got velocity, I'll read those out to you, we've got the point of impact, change between it being on and off, and the recoil. So we'll have a little look at those and we'll see uh, what happens. So I'm going to put three shots down range with the suppressor on and then I'll take the suppressor off, we'll put three shots down range, you'll be able to compare the difference, we're going to have a little look at the target and see how she comes out, so let's give it a shot. I'm using ear protection because even with the suppressor on, it still makes a bit of noise and I do a fair bit of shooting, so I really want to um, try and keep my ears protected as much as possible, so just whack a little plug in there. So three shots, I'm just going to support it at the rear and I'll call out the velocity as I'm shooting them. Twenty-six forty-five. Third shot. 26.35, so by my maths, that's about, well, probably 150 feet per second-ish for average off the book, of what they, what they recommend they'll do in the book. Um, what we'll do now, I'll chuck three more in, we'll take a three-shot group with the suppressor off, we'll be able to compare the difference in recoil, we can compare the velocity difference, and... We'll just see what happens with the point of impact with the target down range. So I've got a three shot group down there. I'm just ripping through the shots. I'm not really trying to get the best in terms of accuracy, of course. I just want to demonstrate to you what's going on. So, but we've got a three shot group there at 100 meters and they're all pretty much bang on that uh, mark. So let that cool and um, we'll do some shots, suppressor off. Hopefully, camera will be able to pick up the difference in noise too. It's a bit hard for it to detect it because when the firearm discharges, I think the noise level just goes way beyond what the mic can pick up. So, But nevertheless, it's pretty significant. Right, three shots, no suppressor. Let's have a little look. 26.35. So you would have saw that jump back a fair bit more. Um, it's certainly a hell of a lot louder. And velocity was 26.40. That's really coming back pretty quick. And um, 26.45. And uh, I'm really noticing the recoil. It's really slapping the shoulder uh, a lot harder. I mean, it's a pretty light gun. Um, and I'm not really supporting it all. I've just got a hold of it on the wrist of the stock here. So it really is coming back pretty quick. Twenty-six fifty-six. So, by my measurement, there it is certainly a little bit slower. Maybe 25, 20, 25 feet per second slower. So it kind of goes with my theory that the suppressor will speed it up a little bit. Um, you could hopefully you can pick that up in the in terms of recoil. That's really coming back a hell of a lot faster and booting my shoulder a lot harder. Um, now, in terms of point of impact, just having a look at the um, targets down there, I've got a three shot group to about an inch and a half on my left target which was the one with the suppressor on I've got about a uh, three inch group with the shot on the right knowing that's partly because I was getting booted and uh, just sort of whipping through the shots but it was certainly uh, it is 
slightly higher, but interestingly off to the right by about three inches. So I've got um, a 300 Win Mag and my shots are significantly higher with the shots with it off than with it on. So there is a difference in point of impact and I suppose the key thing there is is that if you have a suppressor fitted that you should sight it in and shoot it with the suppressor on always so that way if, you sh if you're shooting and you have the suppressor off you'll have a different point of impact you could be missing shots and not, what, not knowing what's going on. So if you did intend on shooting it with the suppressor off at least put some shots through it so you know where they're going to hit. If it's close range bushwork it probably doesn't really matter. We're only talking a couple of inches. But certainly on a longer shot, um, that could be the difference between a clean miss or even an injured animal. So something to bear in mind. So hopefully that uh, demonstration for you uh, gives you a bit of an insight as to what's going on with the suppressors. Um, look, I have a great deal of fun making these videos. If you have any queries or any requests, let me know. Uh, if you want to come down and chat some more, come and see us at Custom Guns. We're on Yarra Street. Um, We've got uh, lots of fun things that we like doing. We like doing things a little bit different, a little bit unusual. We're custom guns because we don't want to just do factory stuff. We want to do fun stuff. So if you have any other requests, want any other info, just give us a yell. Thanks very much.